Hello, everyone. Hello. I see some people are already here. We got Chris. We got LG. Say hello in the chat. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Um, yeah, this is fun. This is great. I'm going to have a little discussion, a little conversation with you all today about packing light and maybe some of the reasons that you feel like you can't or some of the things that you're struggling with. And yeah, we'll go from there. We'll just have a nice, fun little chat. Okay, we got Chris. We got both Chris's. Oh, can anyone else not hear me? Okay, everyone let me know. Can you, okay, Chris can hear me. Okay. Great, 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 great. Don't you just love technology and all the technical difficulties? Ah, Chris, found the mute button. <laughs> nice. Okay. Whew. You know, like doing this stuff, like, yeah, all these little things can go wrong. So, yes. All right, perfect. Stacy, good to see you. Suzanne, lovely that you can make it. LG, Vicky, good to see you. We have lots of ladies from the last packing class are here. Um, I feel like you all shouldn't be struggling to pack light now, hey? <laughs> okay. Vicky is so excited. Me too. Me too. How is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Um, is it evening for you? Chris says, not struggling, but always learning from you and other people. Yes, yes. So, yeah, good to come to these types of things. Hey, great evening for you, Vicki. Ah, awesome, Stacy. Yes. Well, this chat is actually open to everyone in the HPL world community, not just people in that took the packing class. Suzanne says, I head out on a trip tomorrow. Fun. Where are you going, Suzanne? It's fun. Yes. Have a great trip for sure. Anyone else have any uh, upcoming travel plans that they want to share? I'm always excited to hear about what everyone's getting up to these days. Denise, good to see you. Great evening. Yeah. Stacy has been walking several miles a day because you're carless. Yes, and you can easily put everything in one bag and pick and you pick a small one. Good work. I'm so proud of you, Stacy. So, so proud of you. Oh, okay, cool. Suzanne's going to DC with a lot of eighth graders, and you're their tour director. I'm excited for you, but also terrified for you. <laughs> Chris says, I have a quick girls weekend with my bestie and a week-long trip away with another family. That's fun. <laughs> I think my next uh, trip plans is um, actually to head back up to the Opal Mine in, I think we're going in July. Yeah, so <laughs> that's now a thing. It's now a thing I'm going to be doing. <laughs> so good. Okay. Uh, now you're going to think of me when you see opals, right, Stacy? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, they're really pretty stones. It's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, um, you know, getting to know the whole process behind, like, finding them and shaping them and um, quality and all that kind of stuff. All right, everyone. So tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, what are you struggling with? Why can't you pack light? What are the things that are holding you back from packing light? I want to talk about what you're struggling with. I want to talk about common things that people are struggling with. And we can just kind of like chat. We can brainstorm. We can just, you know, do whatever we feel like over the next 40 minutes or an hour. Ooh, Denise headed out mid-July for a cruise, Oslo to Reykjavik. Wow, that's that sounds very exciting. I'm actually really jealous. <laughs> That sounds like a really cool trip. And how are you going to pack for this trip, trip Denise? <laughs> have you picked your luggage? Have you, uh, <laughs> have you given yourself a boundary to how much you're going to pack? Isabel, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. 
So again, back to my question, what are you struggling with with packing light? What are the things that are keeping you from packing super light? So I'll tell you a little story while people are thinking, while people are typing. Um, so years ago, before her packing list was even an idea, before I knew that this was going to be where I was focusing my life and my attention, um, I was planning on a big round the world trip. Now this is probably over 15 years ago now. And I followed all the blogs. I was on message boards. Yes, this is dating me. Message boards, people. <laughs> I was on message boards, learning from other people about what to pack for an around the world trip. And I really wanted to pack light. Um, and I saw this couple who were traveling for months and months and months, they probably were out for over a year and they had 34 liter bags or it was bags in the 30 liter range. Maybe one was even a 28 liter range. And I wanted that freedom so, so much. I really, really wanted to be able to pack super light. And I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I ended up going with a 55 liter backpack and I had even at one point bought a 30, I think it was like a 34 liter backpack and I had planned on trying to make it work. Um, but I just, I felt like I couldn't do it. And so I didn't. And that is, this is so long ago. Um, and that was just me not knowing what to expect, not having done it, not having the knowledge that I have now, because now if I look at 34 liters, I'm like, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> if you've taken our packing class, you know that 34 liters can get you a lot of stuff, right? And I could totally do that same trip now and I could pack that 34 liter bag and feel completely comfortable with it. But at the time I did not do it. And I think it was because of a lot of factors. There was a lot of, um, you know, just unknowns. There was a lot of, I hadn't actually done a trip, a big trip like that before. I didn't know what to expect. I felt like I needed to have all these things that I actually didn't need to have. So I was trying to prepare for all these potential scenarios that weren't really an issue. And if they were an issue, I could probably solve the problem there. Just not knowing these things. So for me, that was a big reason why I couldn't pack light, but I'm interested to see what you all are are saying here oh isabel <laughs> she's packing for the california mercon and all your teaching went out the window isabel <laughs> mermaid stuff is fragile and bulky and i need to talk to you about chunky kits okay all right yes we'll have a chat about this um I mean, packing mermaid stuff is a special circumstance. And that's another reason why you may not be able to pack as light as you want, right? A lot of people have special circumstances. They, um, you know, might have a certain trip that they're going towards. They might have a medical reason. Um, you know, the trip might have a specific activity that requires more luggage. And in these cases, it's hard to pack light. Like you might not be able to pack carry on only. It just depends, right? But what you can do is you can minimize everything else. So the mermaid stuff, Isabel, probably cannot downsize that very well, but you can downsize everything else that you're bringing so that what you do bring is more manageable, right? So there are situations where you may not be able to pack light and that is okay. No one's judging you for that. Okay. No one's judging you. <laughs> I've repacked so many times, struggles with flippers. Yeah. <laughs> Not something you hear every day. So thank you for sharing. Okay. Denise says, paring down my extras. And um, that is, that is something. Yeah. Paring down your extras. So what are your extras? Are your extras what you would consider your what if items? So that's something I want. I would like to know more about <laughs> all the possibilities. Yes. Chris says, I feel like my vacations are escapes and treats, and I used to pack gluttonously all the outfits, all the options, all the scenarios, all the looks. <laughs> well, again, okay, so this is another thing I like to bring up because, yes, while we like to pack light, the reason I talk about packing light is because it 
um, having a lot of luggage tends to detract from my experience. Um, I hate struggling with it. I hate dealing with it. I hate paying for it. I hate waiting for it. I hate carrying it. So <laughs> for me, the benefit of having less stuff far outweighs the benefit of having more things. So if you're going on this luxurious getaway and you feel like this is like your only chance to, you know, really indulge and, and like dress up and do all the things and that's more important to you, then, you know, that's a time where you may not want to pack light and that's okay. As long as, as long as having all that stuff and managing it isn't you know, adding a lot of stress and burden to your, you know, supposed vacation, right? Yeah. So you just really have to weigh, you know, the, the benefit and the cost. Um, so, but as you learned, Chris, from taking our packing class, you can actually get a lot of treats and a lot of joy in a small packing space. You just have to think differently about how you do it. You can have a lot of outfit variations. You can have backups for certain scenarios and not be packing everything in the kitchen sink, right? So it really comes down to um, just thinking differently about the things that you do think are treats, maybe how you get them, maybe buying something when you arrive at your destination will be more fun. It'll be like a little event, you know, that you're really like splurging and um, enjoying yourself, right? Let me see. Ah, love the perspective. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yep. All the possibilities. Yes. So another thing I want to talk about is, you know, are you packing all of these possibilities or all of these like backup items because you're worried? Are you worried about something happening that may not happen? You know, are you saying, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? What will I do? And then you like frantically throw extra items in your suitcase or your backpack or whatever. Um, you know, uh, if that is something that you're doing, then, you know, it's really about really about just like being honest with yourself about the things that you really will need and how often or how likely is it that something might happen you know so all these types of things to consider hey Juliet welcome welcome good to see you <laughs> uh stacy so my family thinks i'm superwoman tomorrow i'm heading on a train to see my son he wants me to bring veggies from my garden and a pound of flour a pound of flour <laughs> plus ricotta cheese plus my workout clothes plus a cooler since we are making food and splitting it hmm interesting interesting so none of this is stuff that you can get when you arrive there could you not get veg oh well, the veggies from your garden obviously you want to bring but what about the pound of flour and ricotta cheese um, can you get that when you get to uh, wherever you are seeing your son? Maybe that would make things, the, the transport, maybe a little easier. Okay, let's see. Denise says, not frantic, very list-oriented. Okay, so you're making, are you making very long lists? Are you planning out um, for everything? Is that what's happening here? Lots of good conversation happening here. <laughs> okay, so Denise. Denise says, just had to use duct tape, carried around my pencil for 15 years for the first time on the last trip. Would have been a real problem and time waster had I not had it. Okay, that's a very interesting um, comment there, all right? 15 years is a very, very, very long time. A very, very long time. So what kind of trip were you on? You know, was it um, an outdoorsy type trip? Were you, um, were you in remote areas, that sort of thing? So what I generally say for stuff like that is if you haven't used it in a, like the last year or two, it's probably, mm, you just can't have everything all the time. However, duct tape is very versatile and it does wrap around a pencil. So having that wrapped around your pencil is not a, 
sorry, just see what's happening in the chat here. Is not, you know, it's not adding to your luggage. It's not anything like that. But I'm just thinking in terms of like other, <laughs> other items that you might be packing, right? Um, if it's something that you don't use that often, then generally I recommend not packing it. Duct tape wrapped around a pencil, that does not take up much space. And duct tape is like such a useful little addition, like rubber bands and safety pins and whatnot. They take up like no space and, you know, can be very useful when they're useful. But, <laughs> sorry, lots of things happening here. Um, they can be very useful, but um, yeah. So at what point, at what point do we not pack that thing that could be useful? Do you know what I mean? Um, so if you haven't used the duct tape in 15 years, I probably wouldn't pack it anymore or something similar. Do you know what I mean? So what do you all think about that? <laughs> I think we're all preoccupied with something that's happened in the chat. So. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Mm. Denise. Yeah, I do understand continually trying to get better. Again, there's all these little things. There's all these little factors to consider. Um, you know, having a little kit of emergency items like duct tape is great. As long as you can minimize those items to be something that can get you out of a situation um, just enough to get you out of a situation so that you could find another solution, so you could get to the store. So that's what I talk about a lot in our packing class is just having enough to get by if you actually were to need it. Um, and instead of packing like a whole roll of duct tape, you wrapped it around your pencil. Perfect, right? So um, yeah, it's about maybe having some backup possibilities, but not packing everything. You know, just packing things, things that can get you by or just enough to get you by, right? <laughs> oh, that's an interesting little comment there, Stace, uh, Suzanne. If I'm tired of shuffling something around, then I stop bringing it. That's a really good point. Oh, Stacy. Okay, so talking about the the flour and and the ricotta and whatnot. You say I'm a sucker, mommy. I guess he doesn't want to pay. <laughs> oh, but maybe you guys can go to the shops together when you get to his place. Maybe that's an idea. <laughs> okay, everyone's still dying uh, in the chat. All right, great. Um, what about shoes? I hear, I've heard this a lot over the years. I, I like to pack light, but like shoes, shoes hold me back. What about everyone else? How do, how do you feel about shoes? How many pairs of shoes are you packing? I feel like a lot of the ladies here have taken the packing class and they are now thinking about things very differently. We got three pairs, three pairs. <clears throat> yes, that's, that's good. Isabel says she's a two shoer flip-flops and boots because she's from SoCal. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. It always depends on the trip. For me, I can go anywhere from one to three pairs depending. And if it's three pairs, it's usually a comfortable shoe, a cute shoe, and like maybe a flip-flop. But sometimes I can combine the like flip-flop and the cute shoe, almost like a sandal type thing. So sometimes you can get by easily with two and one. If I'm going on certain trips, one pair is all that I need. Okay, so two plus flip-flops, two pairs of shoes, a couple of inserts to change around. Yes, very good. <laughs> Juliet says, I packed my Birkenstocks and wore my sneakers to Universal Studios and it was perfect. Well done. <laughs> LG, I would consider packing a pair of flip-flops and wear sneakers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Denise, I used to use flip-flops, cute ones for my dressy shoes. Yeah, if you get the right, if you get the right pair, um, you can kind of wear them as your dressy shoe depending on your trip. I have and I still love them to death. My Crocs, very sexy flips, love them. 
They're so lightweight and I feel like you can kind of get by with them looking cute with a dress or uh, in the right scenario with shorts and whatnot. Like they can just look a little bit cute and the Crocs and they weigh nothing. It's great. Isabel, I'd love to know what flip-flops you have found, if you remember. Um, some flip-flops that had arch support and didn't look clunky like nurse shoes. Yeah, that's always good. <laughs> always good. No offense, thank you, nurses. <laughs> They're on their feet all day. <laughs> it was an IG ad, I'll manifest it. <laughs> They're listening to you right now, and you will now, everyone in here will get all the shoe, all the shoe ads now. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> uh-huh. How do you, how do you say that? Ufos? Ufos? I think someone was talking about those in the packing class, and I hadn't actually looked it up. Awesome. Ufos. Okay, great. Very cool. Um... Yeah, so shoes, that's always the big one. Cool, all right, awesome. So what else might be holding you back from packing light? Um, does anyone ever feel like they just don't have time to pack? Like, is this something that has made you not pack smart in the past? As in, you do it at the last minute and you're just not thinking about it, you're throwing everything in the bag. Like, I hear this, you know, kind of, I've heard this, you know, um, feedback quite a bit. It's just like, I just don't have time. I don't have time to figure out what to pack. So I just pack everything. Um, Janice says, not me. Yes, you're a, a lister. You're a list person. So I feel like you're probably very organized and prepared. Um, Isabel, insecurities, more makeup, more clothes. Yes. Yes. That's a big one. It's kind of another thing I wanted to talk about here was kind of like self-care. Um, Self-care, uh, how you feel about yourself might make you pack or overpack. Uh, maybe you, you don't necessarily like your clothes or maybe you don't like the way that you feel in the clothes that you have right now. So you kind of bring everything or maybe you're someone who has to dress how they feel or um, maybe you think uh, that you want to pack. You pack stuff that you don't normally wear in your daily life. Um, or you bring extra things hoping that you'll wear them on your trip, but they're not something that you'd wear normally. So then you don't, and then you have extra things like all kind of, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of a, a lot to think about. But Isabel, yes, yeah, kind of realize it might be an insecurity. Don't like that breakthrough through all well, you know, but knowing that is giving you something that you can actually look at and address. So, you know, now, you know, how you're feeling about things and how that affects, you know, what you're doing in life and how you pack, um, you can definitely change things up. Chris says, you totally called me out. I used to pack things I don't normally wear often, aspirational outfits, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I've packed many things um, thinking that, hey, um, I'm away from my normal life. Maybe it'll be something that I will just wear and it usually goes unused used to go unused so now i just try not to fool my try not to trick myself you know i just i'm just me <laughs> all right let's go back up here someone vicky says can't find lightweight clothing that packs well um what do you mean packs well as in it doesn't wrinkle um or um uh, doesn't take up much space that sort of thing Stacy says, cheapness makes me pack heavy or not wanting to take the time when I get somewhere to shop. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, cheapness makes me pack heavy. Yeah, I think we talked about that in our packing class, actually. Um, and how, uh, yeah, so you pack a lot of extra things because you don't want to have to spend extra money on your trip away from home to buy something that may be you might already have, or maybe something that you could have packed. But again, I think I said this to you in the class, but it's, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a monetary cost. That's the word I was looking for monetary. There's a monetary cost to having to make a purchase here and there, five bucks, 10 bucks, you know, you know, whatever you need to get uh, at your destination. There's a monetary dollar sign figure. <laughs> 
but there is also a cost to carrying things that you may not even use. You know, there is a physical cost. There is a mental cost. And even though it doesn't have a price tag, there is totally a cost to that. And that's something that should be taken into account. Um, you know, as long as you're not going out and spending $100 on a dress, you know, or, or something like that, um, you know, you're not buying something really expensive, you know, on your trip. Um, the, mon the physical cost of overpacking things is like, on my scale, is like more, you know, the detriment of having to lug stuff around and feel uncomfortable and worry and wait and all that stuff, those costs, man, that's like more than $20 I might have to spend at my destination. <clears throat> so, yeah. Something to consider if that is something that holds you back from packing light. Um, not wanting to take the time to shop. I mean, I guess that depends on the trip. Um, I quite like in normal life, I'm not a shopper. <laughs> In my travel life, I love to go and peruse shops. Like, I find that to be a fun little event. <laughs> All right, let's keep going here. LG says rushing. So rushing might be, is, is, yeah, so rushing at it. Is that what you're talking about there? Is this referring to not having enough time or just rushing? Yeah. Suzanne says, I have a standard packing list and I just print it off each time. Yes. Yes. So if you've done the packing class with us so far and you were pretty happy with your outcome for that sort of trip, save that packing list. Save that packing list. And even if you feel like you need to pack a little more than what you came, um, than your final exam in our packing class, um, this is a good base packing list for a lot of trips. So you can start with that and then you can use the skills and the knowledge that you got in the packing class and you can build onto it and give yourself other options too, if you need them, you know. So if you don't wanna pack a 10 liter bag and you wanna pack 20, you know, build off it from there. But yeah, having a standard packing list that you know works for most trips is a good place to start. Okay, Juliet says, I used to pack too much stuff that added so much weight, toiletries. And I noticed I didn't need my portable charger either. Toiletries. How many of you have struggled with toiletries? I mean, this is a huge one. This is so big because we all have these crazy um, routines. We have products for everything. We have products for our face for our hair, for our bodies, um, makeup, we have, you know, all the things, right? We have pamper kits, we have so many things and <clears throat> it adds up. And if you're not repackaging things appropriately to your trip, then it's going to be a big nuisance. Now, many of you, again, if you've taken the packing class or you followed around here at her packing list, you know that repackaging things makes a huge difference. So while I can tell you to only bring what you truly, truly need, um, <clears throat> you can still be able to pack a lot of things in your toiletry and beauty kit. You can pack a lot of things if you are able to repackage them in a different way. And if you think really critically about it, um, you can get a lot in a very small space. Ah, Isabel, I guess we can nail the class, but like anything, it takes practice. It does. It takes, okay, packing light is a muscle. It's like going to the gym. <laughs> you know, you, you need to rem be able to remind yourself that you can do it. And you need to kind of get that system down in, in like your head and know that I did this, it worked. And then you just start there. Instead of having to go through all the like, brainstorming, problem solving, whatever. It's like, okay, this works for my toiletry kit. You just start there, you know? So life experience, real world exposure therapy um, by packing light is going to help you get better and is going to help it become something that you don't even really have to think about. And it never feels hard unless you're doing a really unique trip that you haven't done or you just haven't traveled in a long time. <laughs> um, you might need to, you know, re, you know, get that muscle going again. So yes, it does take practice. Don't give up. 
every little um, experience that you have, every change that you make uh, is just going to make it easier in the future. Suzanne says, I made my friend laugh on a trip. She watched me refill my purse travel size hand lotion with another travel size lotion. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so the one in your bag, I'm assuming, was like way smaller than the other one. Is that right, Suzanne? More trips will help. Yes, yes. That's super funny. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Okay. Um, all right, uh, let's see who, oh, here's another one that kind of goes down to like, maybe kind of like insecurities or self-care, but how many of you are packing or overpacking or struggling with packing lighter because you kind of worry about what everyone else will think. Now, a lot of comments I've gotten in the past, um, you know, since running this site is, I don't want to look the same in all of my travel photos. Like that is, that is like one comment I have gotten over and over again. <laughs> Stacy's comment. <laughs> um, and I'm wondering if any of you have struggled with this. Is it something like, um, you know, uh, you know, thinking like, oh my gosh, I couldn't rewear something because what will people think? Uh, or, oh my goodness, all my photos are going to have me in the same outfit. What will people think? Has that come across anyone? Is that something that you have dealt with in the past? Okay. Well, um, well, let's kind of jump off that. I'm not sure if anyone has any comments on that in particular. But how have you, like, what about re-wearing things? How does that make you feel? LG says, no, I usually wear similar things anyway. Yeah. People won't even notice the same outfit. Yep. Especially if you're able to just change up like one little thing. Um, people won't, won't notice or they won't say anything. If anyone were to say anything about it, it's like, why are they paying attention? <laughs> Denise says, I have absolutely no problem with mix and match and rewear several times. Me too. Denise says, why you are going to nail um, packing for your trip. Hey, so good. Especially men won't know. <laughs> right, Isabel? They don't care. <laughs> Stacy says, I wore the same dress for 14 days in a row. And finally, my daughter said something <laughs> like it took her 14 days, two weeks before she was like, hmm, this something looks the same. <laughs> it's so true. I wear the same t-shirt every time I do a live <laughs> here in the community. So yeah, I'll wear a tank top instead of a t-shirt the next day, Juliet says. Yeah. So you just make small changes, mix up something, add a little scarf, um, all these things. So <laughs> Juliet, you didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, it's my HPL shirt. So I tend, I've been wearing it every time I get on and do like a live event. So now you know. It's my work outfit. <laughs> Add on a piece of statement jewelry. Yes, Vicki, I agree. You can just change things out very easily. And people probably won't even notice. And there's lots of fun ways that you can change them up, change up your outfit um, if you are concerned about that. So uh, one thing I've heard many times from people is like, especially in winter travel, um, you're probably going to be wearing your coat and you're going to be wearing, um, you know, maybe a hat. You'll be wearing the same coat in like all your out, all your photos, right? It doesn't even matter what you're wearing underneath. You could be wearing the same outfit underneath as well. So something to think about if you're going on a winter trip and you always are going to have a coat on, um, you can pack light because no one's going to even know if you're wearing a different outfit. So there you go. All right. So what about? What about when it's a long trip? Do long trips make you pack so much more? <clears throat> How does a long trip affect your packing? <laughs> Vicky says, makes me crazy. <laughs> 
Is that what you're referring to? <laughs> uh, Stacey says, no, I think you grabbed the basics and all is well. Yeah, okay. Yes, good, Stacy. you are learning, you're learning. <laughs> it's very true. So, yes, Denise, excellent, excellent student. So Denise says, pack the same, but wash. Yes, yes, very, very, very true. Isabel says, I don't have experience in this. My long trips were tropical or camping, and those are easy. <laughs> Yeah, so over the years, uh, throughout running her packing list, I have talked about longer trips many times. And I basically, as a like guideline, is pack one week's worth of clothing, one week's worth of outfits, wash and re-wear every week. Um, that is the basis. That is the base. But if you are packing anything for a trip, a one-week trip, you know, if you're packing a handbag for a one week trip, you can essentially just have that for your longer trips. Now you will have to think about toiletries. Uh, you might have to buy things or stock up as you go, or maybe you have a little bit more space um, where you can pack a little bit extra of those. But for the most part, clothes, you can just wash, rewear. It's as easy as that. Stacy says, I think I'll be so sick of the clothing I wore for the whole trip that I will reward myself with new clothing when I return home. I mean, that's a nice way to go about it. <laughs> with all the money that you save on paying for luggage and having to, you know, wait around and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. Like get yourself something nice for at home. That's a fun little way to think about it. Um, yeah. Um, another thing I like to think about when it comes to wearing the same thing on a trip is uh, when I actually look back at photos, it actually instantly, I know instantly like what trip that was for, what trip I was on. So if I pack like a yellow t-shirt and I'm wearing it like almost every day or whatever, a lot of my photos have this yellow t-shirt and I know that trip is my trip to Guatemala. I, you know, that is you know, instantly that photo is from that time, that place. And so it's kind of fun that way. Uh, if you think about it that way, it kind of is like a visual um, trigger to remember more things because you're like, yeah, the yellow shirt. And then if you wear the yellow shirt again in your normal life, you're like constantly remembering all of these experiences that you have. And so it's, it's another way that I can feel more comfortable like wearing the same thing when I'm traveling. <clears throat> Denise says, I've done two months in Europe with 25 inch rolling backpack and carry on tote. Well done, well done. Love it, love it. Okay, let's see, what else? Yeah, thank you, LG. I think it's a nice perspective. <laughs> Okay, what about when the weather is variable? When the weather is variable, is that holding you back from packing light? T let's talk about it. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. What sorts of things are you overpacking? Um, what are you doing so you don't overpack? Like, chat about it now. Let's see what we can get going here in this little discussion. <laughs> Stacy says, that's my trip always. <laughs> Okay, Denise, I have winter wardrobe, summer and spring and fall ones. So you have your own, yes, you have your own like wardrobe already kind of like set out so you know how to make it work. But then layers, yes, layers. Layers, yes, layers. Okay, yep. Yes, everyone. I know we talk about it all the time, but layers, layers, layers. Layers are what's going to help you <laughs> to not pack everything and uh, be able to have the versatility in your travel wardrobe. Uh, Barb says, I spend more money on more temperature flexible pieces like wool, etc. Yes, I agree. If you are able to invest in certain types of clothing, that is going to help your packing immensely, immensely. I love merino wool. 
I love icebreaker. I love it. It's so good. When I wear those uh, merino wool clothing, I feel so much more comfortable and it's noticeable. Like for example, the last couple of weeks I've been rotating um, a long sleeve gray merino wool top underneath like my shirts with a cotton long sleeve gray top underneath my shirts. And I will tell you, I like, they're like the same thickness in fabric in fabric weight. <laughs> and, um, I wear the cotton one once and then it smells and I have to wash it. Um, also it doesn't keep me as warm. So, you know, I feel like I have to have something else on or I feel a bit chilly. Whereas I can wear the merino wool top. I wore it just to test it out. I wore it like five times without washing it next to my skin. And it took like five times before I said, mm, okay, maybe I'll wash it. But just, and also my temperature, my body temperature just feels so much more normalized when I wear it. So just something to consider. If you're able to put these on your wish list, do it. I highly recommend it. It's just great. Will make a huge difference in what you're able to pack and how you're able to pack. LG, I am sold. <laughs> uh huh. Menopause is so unpredictable, even in merino. That's something that we should talk about more in her packing list, I think. Um, yes, very interesting. So, you mean like your body temperature or um, what sorts of things are you referring to, Vicki? Yeah. So again, with my merino, merino wool long sleeve top, I have other like long sleeve merino tops that are thin, but if I wear both of them together, it gives me like the same warmth as like a nice little jumper or a little jacket, um, a nice jacket. So it's just, I feel like I get a more versatile wardrobe with thin pieces that I can layer together or take off if it's warm. I will, I will always remember this one experience I had when I was traveling many years ago in Turkey, I had a merino wool icebreaker jacket with a hood. It was very thin, um, very, very thin. And, um, but it was really great for layering. I remember in the morning I was on a tour, I was in a tour group and in the morning it was chilly. So I had that on, but then as the sun came out and it got to midday, everyone else in the tour group had taken off their layers and they were in their t-shirt or tank tops. And I was still in my jacket zipped up feeling perfectly okay. That's because the Merino helps to regulate your own heat a little bit better. And so while everyone else was like hot, I was like, actually, I'm still really comfortable. Uh, and I, that was like one of my first experiences of like actually traveling with Merino. And ever since then I've been sold. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. So Vicki says, uh, body temp fluctuates. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about Vicki. So with menopause and the body temperature fluctuating, Stacy says sweating in the forehead and freezing the armpits. And then it's over until the next time. Yep. Fun. Sounds like fun. Stacy. I'm like a faucet on full force. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so layers is like what you need and and something that's quick drying because if you are sweating, you want something that's like quick drying and also smells off. So I feel like Merino would be like one of the best things for you. Is that like, do you feel better when you're wearing Merino and stuff like that happens? Okay, Stacy says, can you speak about layers more? Are they tighter, closer near the body? It can be. I'm just talking about having multiple things on at the same time, things that you can, um, wear all together that give you, give you warmth if you need it, or that you can easily take off. And then you have like, uh, something that you can wear when it is warmer outside. So you feel cooler. So, um, like for example, I will have like a long sleeve top underneath this, a t-shirt, and then like a light little cardigan or jacket over the top. That's layering. So things that you can wear all together at the same time and then be able to take them off if you are feeling warm. 
Stacy, most of the things that I take off are the outer things. Um, so if I'm feeling warm, I might take off my cardigan, my t-shirt, and then I have maybe my just base layer still on if that works or, and put them in my bag or carry my cardigan, you know, it just depends on what I'm doing. Right. Um, or I can go and to the bathroom and take off the long sleeve top and be more comfortable. So it's just being able to mix things up, um, easily have options so that you aren't carrying around like I hate really bulky things. <laughs> bulky things take up a lot of space in your bag and heavy bulky things you can only wear if it's cold. But if you have thin things, you can wear the thin things on their own or you can put them all together and you can make a warm thing. So that's what that's why layering is so great. <laughs> Laura says, I'm the worst at layering. I'm so hot by nature. It's a curse. Well, that's actually probably not. A... <laughs> well, then you're really uh, good for like cold weather travel then, aren't you? <laughs> uh, what kind of, okay, first of all, what kind of things are you layering? Um, you know, maybe you need to have some lighter weight items that you can wear, layer, layer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Coffee's wearing off everyone. Um, yeah, so maybe try and find different types of layers. I have some really like thin, you know, tops that I can throw over. I really love the um, Dubai snap top, snap up top from Splice. It's a long sleeve button up top and I like, it's super lightweight. Um, I feel good in it and it protects you from the sun and it kind of cools you. But if you wear it over other things, it just gives you a little bit more warmth. So something like that is, like something like I I would recommend looking at. Stacy, I need to get rid of my oversized heavy hoodies. Yeah, well, don't get rid of them. If you're going to use them at home, that's fine. But if you want to travel, I recommend um, getting hoodies that are made from like merino if you can, or just lighter weight things that you can throw on and layer. Um, again, if you're traveling somewhere and you know it's going to be super super cold, um, you know maybe bring that heavy. The heavy hoodie, but only bring one of them. You know, have the one that you wear all the time. Laura says, good to know about the splice uh, snap up top. I was looking at the reversible tunic. Yes, the tunic is nice too. Yeah. Um, she's supposed to be getting more stock of that, I believe, soon. So hang tight, everyone. She's hoping for June to get that reversible tunic that you saw if you were in the packing class that I wore in the packing class as well. Um, um, Ashley's supposed to have that back, I believe, hopefully in June. So yes, definitely check it out. Anyone else? If not, I'm going to, uh, just talk about one more thing and then we'll wrap up. So I think one of the biggest reasons why people tend to overpack is because of confidence and because of mindset. So I think you all know what I'm talking about. It is that worry that, okay, will I be okay with just this amount of stuff? Will I be okay if I don't pack that extra thing? Will I be okay if, um, you know, it's colder and I didn't, you know, pack another jumper or whatever. So there's this whole confidence issue. And again, that's going to come from practice. It's going to come from, <clears throat> you know, taking the trip uh, and knowing what you are able to be comfortable with. And you, I think after taking the packing class, especially everyone who's done that, you will know that you can be quite comfortable with so much less stuff than you ever thought. And so it's mindset. That's a lot. That's a lot of the reason that is a lot of the thing that is keeping people from being able to pack light. I mean, would you agree with that? Would everyone think that that is at the end of the day, is that something that you think is what has held you back in the past? I mean, obviously knowledge, obviously gear, all that kind of stuff helps, definitely helps. But at the end of the day, it is your confidence in that smaller bag. You know, it is that is your confidence in your in your choices. Um, yeah. And if anyone 
here has not taken the packing class, I totally recommend signing up starting again, June 5th. So you can join at herpackinglist.com slash masterclass. And then you can go through this whole journey together and uh, really just see, you know, you can plan it out. You can do the hard work now. You can, you know, know what you need and know what you're able to, you know, deal with. So you can have that confidence to take the trip with the smaller bag. So you can go carry on only. So you can go personal item only. And, you know, just feel really confident about it. Cause that is the main thing. I couldn't pack in that 34 liter bag when I was going on that around the world trip because I did not have the confidence. I didn't have a class like this. I didn't have a community like this of people who showed me what was possible. Okay. So definitely consider that. Um, yes, I got lots of people took the class. It was so much fun. It was so good. So good. Everyone who's done it like, yeah, it's been great. Cynthia says, I went for almost two weeks without a suitcase. Sure makes you realize how much you really need. Did they lose your suitcase? I feel like that's like a lost luggage thing. <laughs> and that is one of those things. You think about it, we think it'll be the worst case um, scenario. Uh, it might be like the worst, um, you know, we think, yes, Cynthia, yeah, lost luggage, yes. We always think that that's going to be the worst thing. Like we, they lose our stuff. And then if you have to deal with less stuff, you're like, what? <laughs> I'm actually okay. And you guys will all be okay. You can all pack light. I believe in every single one of you. And thank you for joining me today. I'm going to let you all go and have your evening. And I'm going to copy this uh, chat. I think Laura just said packing lights like a vacation for your mind. That's fun. That's a fun way to think about it. Okay, I'm copying the chat, so I will paste this in with the replay. But again, thank you all for tuning in and for having a little discussion with me. If there's anything else you'd like to have a live about, you know, send me a message or a post. Um, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Have a good evening. Good day. Bye.